question I get asked quite often, and it's a very important question, is, hey, Eric, do you have any recommendations? What should I be working on? How should I practice to, you know, get the most out of my limited time uh, to move forward? So I have some thoughts on this, and that's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing is play every day. Find a way, even if it's just five minutes, you know, five, ten minutes every day, going to be so much better than the old, I know how we live. Procrastinate, 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 cram. You know, that's how we got through school, but it doesn't really work with, with something like this that's process-based, that's all about, like, how can I incorporate this into my life? And I understand, yo, not everybody's a guitar teacher who has the luxury of playing guitar all day long. So the best thing, the first thing I can say is find a way to fit it in every day, even just a little bit, even just a little bit. And then the second thing, before we get into nuts and bolts of what to play, is, and this is an interesting one, it doesn't necessarily matter exactly what you're working on as long as you are working on it slow, clean, and musical. That to me is, is a big deal that like, yeah, rather than just kind of run things, run mechanical things, not really paying attention, like really pay attention. By the way, you can check the description box below for my website, Patreon, True Fire Course, Rig Rundown, and uh, also, by the way, my new record, Eric Haugen, Bundle Up, is streaming and downloadable wherever you stream and download music. Now, assuming that we fit playing somewhere into our daily routine, you know, now let's talk about what to play. And here's some interesting thoughts I have. Rather than warming up with scales, which yes, we do need to know a major scale. Always do both ways if you're gonna. Minor scale. And blues. I think what's more useful than just warming up with scales than like just kind of checking out and, and running scales is you take your existing repertoire and you go back over things again and again. Again, you try to get them slow, musical, and clean. Like, you know, say the opening from Tom Petty's Breakdown. Let's see how clean I am today. I messed something up there. Let's go back a little bit slower. By the way, I'm going to tab all this stuff out, put it up on my Patreon page for free. You could head over there and get it. Consider supporting me on Patreon. It helps me out a lot when people do that. Thank you to those of you who do that. So that's the first thing is existing repertoire, little intros, little riffs, little solos you've learned. Don't just learn it and then go on to the next thing because I know how it is. We're just, you know, we're just stuff. I'm contributing to it right now, screaming information at you, telling you what you should do and look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. But I think it's really cool to have like a core repertoire of simple, small things that you come back to and you get them cleaner and you get them better. And then when you got them better, you get them even better and even better and even better. Like, you know, I played the, uh, the little solo from something. You know, I learned that when I was, I don't know, 17 years old, but I keep revisiting it and keep checking in. How's my vibrato? How's my bends? How's my phrasing? You know, so that's like a decision we make rather than absorb more and more and more and more. We're like, hold on, I have like a core repertoire here that I always come back to and check in on. So that's like my, my, my recommendation for warm up that might be different than what other people say about practicing scales. Here's my little practicing too much scales analogy. Again, yeah, you should know scales, but you know, don't, don't waste too much time on them because it's like this. At least here's what I think. Say you wanted to write a good little short story and you know, that's about characters and plot and description and all that stuff. But, but, but you were like, but you know what? I better be really good at typing first. So I'm gonna make sure I spend, you know, 20 minutes every day practicing my typing speed. No. So I feel like practicing scales is kind of like that, that yeah, you need to know them and you need to know how to move them around, but then start, start writing your short story. Start working on a story there. 
Anyway, that's my thought on that. Now, that's existing repertoire. That's not really getting to know the instrument so much. So then the other side of practice, you know, and so what, that's only what, five minutes maybe of just running existing repertoire, getting it cleaner and cleaner, is the kind of practice, or let's call it play, of moving the football down the field. I guess that's an American analogy. Uh, let's just say, yeah, well, I'm gonna stick with the American football analogy, moving it down the field. So that means fretboard knowledge, getting to know things better and better, getting a little more, a little more understanding of your instrument, I think would be very enriching for your life. And I don't know a better way than the cage system, than grooves and fills, chord shapes and pentatonic shapes out of cage. That's why I preach it so much, because it's what I teach, it's how I work, it's how I see things. And again, just to review the idea is like, say we got a C chord here. There's a chord shape, that's quote unquote an E shape, because if we had a capo there, that would be an E chord. There's a major pentatonic scale. It's right there where my hand is with that chord. Classic A minor chord, you know, bar chord. Here's the pentatonic minor that's right there with that chord. This is what I do with my students. They, any of you have taken lessons with me, you're like, yep, yep, this is what he does. So you'd, you'd apply a groove to it. So just to review the cage system, you know, which is, I guess, what I'm a zealot about. The idea is, yo, every chord has five shapes. C, 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 C. And every shape has a pentatonic scale. And so on and so forth, and that Everything that I've ever played or transcribed or observed somehow goes into those categories. So that's why I always I'm like, hey, you want a better understanding of the instrument. You want to feel like you know what's going on. You want to know like chords, triads, arpeggios, everything else. It's a sorting system. Some One way or another, every lick, every riff I've ever played is in there, is one of those structures. That's why I preach it so much. Anyway. The last thing, so let's see, we basically, yeah, just to review what we got so far, play every day a little bit. Go slow and musical. We got warm up with existing repertoire, and then we got moving the football down the field by using grooves and fills. The other thing that I think us guitar players tend to just skip right over is progressions, chord progressions, chord forms, and things like that. So, you know, you can either, and same thing, you could do that two ways. You could do existing repertoire. Let's see about playing some police. Tricky part. That is such a cool chord. Ain't easy though. What a great chord though. So that's a police wrapped around your finger. So that's existing repertoire, which you can see, that's hard for me, <laughs> still hard for me. Or the last little point I'll make or, or a little practice thing I'll recommend is you got, you know, I have a whole series of music theory for guitar players and it's, you know, not, it's not that much major scales, minor scales, how the chords work in those keys, and then how that generates chord progression. So then the final assignment, and you know, write stuff down, you know, write stuff down, have a little notebook to come up with stuff and write down ideas that you're working on and things like that, uh, would be like, it would be like, eh, what's a one, five, six, four, and B flat, 
what kind of strum pattern am I going to give it? Oh, I'll give it the pattern I call the piano pattern. So that's groove and uh, that's keys, groove, and chord progression type stuff. So here's a one, five, six, four in B flat with what a pattern I call the piano pattern. In there, you know, doing stuff like that. Let's see, I could do it over here. Hmm. Is that four chord? So I hope that helps. The main thing I think is, is obviously, it doesn't always matter, but you should go really slow and musical. Don't check out. Don't let yourself off the hook with sloppy and clumsy practice. All that leads, it just makes you into a sloppy and clumsy player. Um, go slow, go musical, come back to simple existing repertoire and just really just perfect it, you know, get the minutia down. And then there's the moving the football down the field stuff. Thanks so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do. Even if it's just clicking like and subscribe, it keeps me in business with the algorithm relevancy because I don't put ads on my channel because I think they're annoying. Ad might play on this one because I played so much copywritten material. Know that I do not make money from that. That goes right to the publisher. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza. Yeah.